This is part 6 of Angular CLI tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the significance of the Angular CLI configuration file .angular-cli.json. This is the configuration file that the Angular CLI uses. Notice within the project folder, we have a file with that name .angular-cli.json. As you can see, this file has several settings in it. The settings from this file are used when we generate Angular features like components, pipes, services, etc. When we run unit and end-to-end -end tests, when we build the application, etc. We'll be revisiting this file many times as we progress through this Angular CLI course. Name property specifies the name of our Angular project, which in our case is app4. Root property specifies the root directory of our application. By default, it is SRC. Notice here we have a folder SRC and all the project files are present within this folder. We can change this default name to anything we want by using source-dir option when generating a new Angular project using the nginu command. Out dir, this property specifies the output directory for build results. By default, it is named test. Assets this property specifies the assets of our application to copy over when building your project. By default, whatever we have in the assets folder and this favicon.ico are copied over. Index. This property specifies the main HTML page of our application which is index.html. Main. This property specifies the name of the main entry point file which is main.ts. This file contains the code to bootstrap our root application module, app module. Polyfills. This property specifies the name of the polyfills file. Angular is built on the latest standards of the web platform. Targeting such a wide range of browsers is challenging because not all browsers support all features of the modern browsers. This can be compensated by using polyfill scripts that implement missing features in JavaScript. Test. This property points to this file test.ts which is right here and it's the main entry point for unit test and it loads all the .spec and framework files. tsconfig this property points to this file tsconfig.app.json and that file is right here and it contains the TypeScript compiler configuration for our Angular application. And we have a similar file here tsconfig.spec.json and testconfig property points to that. As you might have guessed already, this file tsconfig.spec.json contains the TypeScript compiler configuration for unit test whereas this one contains the compiler configuration for our Angular application. Prefix. We'll discuss this property in just a bit, but before that, let's discuss the styles property. This property specifies the global styles for our application, which by default is styles.css. Instead, we can also use less or sass. Now, if we want to change it to less or sass, we can use the style option when generating a new Angular project using the ng-new command. Let's look at this in action now. We want to generate a new Angular project, so I'm going to use ng-new and then the name of our Angular project. I'm going to name it app5. By default, this project is going to make use of CSS. If you want to change the styles to less or sass, we can do that by using the style option. If you want to use less, you specify less like that. If you want to use sass, you specify sass like that. Now when I press enter, it's going to generate the new Angular project and install all the required npm packages. There we go. Project created successfully. Now let's change the folder to app5 and then open our project using Visual Studio Code. Now if you look at the styles property within the Angular CLI configuration file, notice it is set to sass instead of the default CSS. And if you look at the root component within the source folder, notice again this root component is using sass as the style. Because this setting is stored inside the Angular CLI configuration file, when we generate a new component, it's going to use sass as the style for that newly generated component. Let's look at this in action. Let's clear the screen first. To generate a new component using Angular CLI, we use this command ng generate component and then the name of the component. I named our component ABC. We can use this command or its shortcut ng 
g for generate, c for component, and the name of our component, ABC. When I press enter key now, it's going to generate a new component with name ABC and place this component inside its own folder. Notice it also has updated the root module file with our newly generated component. And if you look at this component, it is using SAS as a style instead of the default CSS. So every time we generate a new component, it's going to use SAS as the style. If you want to use CSS instead, then you can do so by using the style option along with this ng generate command. Let's look at that in action. So ng generate component and let's generate a component with name XYZ and I don't want to use SAS as the style for this new component. Instead, I want to use CSS. So I can use the style option with this ng generate command and specify I want to use CSS. Now when I press enter, it's going to create a new component with name XYZ which it's going to place inside its own folder and if you look at the style this component uses using it is CSS instead of SAS. Prefix. This property specifies the selector prefix to apply for the generated components. Look at this property value. It is app. And if you look at the components that we have generated so far, look at the root component TypeScript file right here. And if you look at the selector of this root component, look at the selector prefix app. And again, if you look at this ABC component that we have generated, again, the selector for that has a prefix app. Same is the case with this XYZ component. Notice the selector prefix here again is app. We can change this using the prefix option when generating a new Angular project using the ng-new command. Let's look at that in action. Clear the screen first. Go back to C drive and let's generate another new project. Let's name this app6 and with this project, we don't want to use that default selector prefix app. So I want to change that to something else. So I'm going to use dash dash prefix option and the value that we want to use as the selector prefix. Let's say I want to use pragim as the selector prefix. So we specify that value and when we press the enter key, it's going to generate our new Angular project. There we go. The project is successfully created. Now let's change the directory to app6 and then open our project using Visual Studio Code. Now if we look at the prefix property value within the Angular CLI configuration file, notice it is Prajim. And if we look at the root component that is generated, which is inside this app folder, here's the root component TypeScript file. Look at the selector prefix. It is Prajim as expected. Now every time we generate a new component, it's going to use the prefix property value that is present within our Angular CLI configuration file, Prajim. Let's look at this in action. Clear the screen first and let's generate a new component, ng generate component and let's name our component ABC. Now the selector prefix for this newly generated component ABC should be Prajim. Let's confirm this. So within our source folder, inside the app folder, we should see this ABC folder. If you don't find this folder, click this refresh icon right here and the folder should show up. And if you look at the component class, notice the selector prefix, it is Prajim as expected. And if you look at our Angular CLI configuration file, we know this property prefix has Prajim. So every time we generate a new component, it's going to read this Angular CLI configuration file and use this Prajim as the selector prefix. Now, if you want to override that, you can do so by using that dash dash prefix option along with the ng generate command. Let's look at that in action. ng g C and let's name our component XYZ. With this component, we want to use a different prefix. So I'm going to use dash dash prefix option and then let's say we want to use tag as the prefix. Now when we press enter, it's going to create a new component and for this newly created component, the selector prefix is going to be tag. Let's confirm this. Expand the source folder and then within the app folder, we have our XYZ folder. And if we look at the component class, notice the selector prefix is tag instead of Prajim. So we are able to override the value that we have within this prefix property by using dash dash prefix option again with ng generate command. There are several other settings in this file. 
We'll discuss what those settings are and their purpose in our upcoming videos as we progress through this course. So, the settings from the Angular CLI configuration file are used when we generate Angular features like components, pipes, services, etc. Run unit and end-to-end -end tests, build the application, etc. The important point to take away is that the values in the Angular CLI configuration file depends on the options that we have used with the ng-new command when generating a new Angular project. For example, if you do not use the dash dash prefix option with the ng-new command, then the default value app is stored in the configuration file for that prefix property. This means every time we generate a new component, it's going to use that prefix property value as the selector prefix for that newly generated component. For some reason, for a newly generated component, if we want to use a different selector prefix than the one that we have in the configuration file, then we can do so by using the dash dash prefix option with the ng generate command. So this leads us to another important conclusion. Some of the options like dash dash prefix can be used with several commands like ng new and ng generate. We have just seen that in action. Thank you for listening and have a great day.